Hello friends, today I tried beating Resident Evil 5 without taking any damage, and you wouldn't believe the absolute heartache and agony I went through during this challenge. What this means is I have to get through all of Resident Evil 5 without taking even a smidgen of damage. This is easier said than done though, because literally everything is dangerous. Phases? Pfft, be careful, there could be snakes. Well how about chickens? Holy fuck! The rules are really simple. Anytime I take damage, I have to restart the checkpoint, and Sheva's health doesn't count towards this because she's completely... Uh huh. Let's just say special. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I make like one video a year. Maybe two if I'm feeling really crazy. Subscribe to me and click that bell so you don't miss my annual video. It's completely free and will remind you in seven years when my next video will be going up. Alright, so I chose the hardest difficulty available as usual and began my journey. Wait, this isn't Resident Evil 4. It was a warm summer's day. Biceps were gleaming, these African guys were beaming, and sexual harassment was ripe in the air. You don't have to get touchy. Bruh. Sheva and I were tasked with finding a man named Irving, the worst gaming villain in history. It was kind of freaky walking around this random neighborhood. You know, being an outsider and all. I felt like everyone was watching me. I tried asserting my dominance over these poor souls, but something became immediately clear to me. These people were goddamn psychopaths. So I uninserted my dominance and peeled out of there. <gasps> Freeze! I'm just a realist. It's a capitalist society. Not everyone is cut out for that kind of constant pressure. Sure, there are opportunities to be had. But at what price? No gain. Someone else loses. That's the great thing about us Americans. We're all different. Sheva and I met our boy, grabbed our guns, and made our way to our first enemy. And let's just say, I regret walking in on what we walked in on. <gasps> You're gay! You're- He's gay! <gasps> My man took that like a champ! Unfortunately, this guy wanted to manhandle and abuse me, so Sheva and I quickly took care of the lad. I threw my body through the nearest window to show Sheva how masculine I was, and that's when we got jumped. Oh my god. Leave it to Sheva to shoot her last few bullets at an infinite horde of enemies. Have I ever told you guys how much I hate her? We ran through an underground passage, I shot some innocent rats for their gold doubloons, and we arrived just in time to find our friend getting decapitated. That. That right there. That terrified me. I didn't want to have to go through the horde of Magini at such a low level, but too bad for me because it was inevitable. So I put my fear aside, barricaded the doors and windows, and prayed for a quick death. Now again, we're good as long as I don't take damage. I'm not responsible for Sheva, and she's so goddamn stupid that no matter what I do, she'll always find a way to get slapped around. So after beating up a few of the boys and waiting for Big Chungus to bust through the gate, we were pretty well home free. I looted a bit, bullied the locals a bit, and made my way to the tallest room in the tallest tower. This is a perfect spot to hide because Big Chungus can't make his way up there, and only a very small amount of enemies seem to climb up there. And 30 seconds later, it was over. <laughs> That was friggin' easy, huh, Sheva? We continued on our adventure when we came across a random woman in an alleyway. I immediately took my opportunity to falcon punch that frail woman and then turned her head to spaghetti. Sheva and I completely bullied a fence hopper, bullied some more innocent bystanders, and came across a chicken. Alpha team was the opposite of alive and all we could do was get out of there. But unluckily for us, we were ambushed by a... Whatever that thing is. Thank goodness we were conveniently next to a crematorium. This guy was pretty easy to defeat, just trap him in the oven, pull the trigger, and watch him cook like a juicy Thanksgiving dinner. You know, it was getting real sickening having to watch over Sheva like a goddamn toddler. When I wasn't taking her guns or ordering her around, she'd be throwing herself into horrible situations to get herself killed. Oh wow! There's a horde of demon dogs running around down there? Sheva's on her way! Wait, is that a tripwire? Why crawl under it when you can run straight through it? Disappointment wasn't a strong enough word for what Sheva was. After spending 30 minutes trying to get through the shirtless man's gauntlet, Sheva and I took out some sewer dogs, took care of some flying demons, and after fighting some Maginis with our helicopter bro, I came across my favorite weapon in the entire game. The bolt-action rifle. This bad boy right here could fit 47 goddamn rounds in the 5 round magazine and it was always a headshot insta-kill. This was my bread and butter. The thing that allowed me to roll in the dough like a goddamn leprechaun on St. Patrick's Day. From here, it was smooth sailing. Until we got to the chainsaw guy. This guy looks like he eats three breadcrumbs a day, but don't let that fool you. He packs some grade A beef, my boys. You wanna hear what I really love about having Sheva as a partner? I can be doing my absolute best, be avoiding the enemies, 
doing a real stand-up job. And then here comes Sheva, like the crackhead she is, trudging along like a turtle, and then finally deciding, huh, I've lived enough for this life. Come on! I actually prefer Ashley to Sheva. At least Ashley can actually listen to instructions. So yes, after multiple, multiple, multiple attempts, we were finally able to get through this. Christ, carrying a baby through a war zone would have been easier. Next on our list for happy fun time places was the spooky dark mines. Sheva did pretty all right here. She listened to every command, held the light perfectly almost the entire way, and let me handle things the way they needed to be handled. But most importantly, Sheva felt useful for the first time in a long time. She was happy, and so was I. You know what, Sheva? Maybe you're not so bad after all. We finally caught up to Irving, made awkward eye contact for way too long, and he eventually got saved by scuffed Batman. Here, I thought the challenge was over. With a Gatling gun firing at us from the south, crossbow guys in the east, and dynamite guys around every corner, this was it. Just kidding, I got past this section my first try, baby, it was easy. The bolt action rifle is just too good. Here, we came to the bat. This little cutie was a handful. Now from here on out, as I'm sure you've noticed, I kept ammo away from Sheva at all times. Not only was she a danger to me, but she was also a danger to herself. She had no concept of saving ammo and was better off running in circles doing nothing. And guess what? Even when Sheva was being completely useless, she still proceeded to blow by my disappointment expectations. Let's say at the start of the fight, Sheva started at a 0 out of 100 for usefulness. Very quickly, I could totally count on her reaching far into the negatives. I mean, I can't make this stuff up. You see these mines I'm holding? Sheva can't use them, only I can. The way you use these mines is to place them on the ground and then hope that an enemy will step on them. Uh, I mean, pretty typical, right? Well, guess what? As I placed the mines, Sheva began picking them up. What the fuck? Breathe, Dante. Just breathe. So what I did to defeat Mr. Bat was pray that Dobby the dumb elf didn't mess with my mines, get the bat to fall onto them, and then shoot him in the milkers with my rifle. After a few rounds of this, he was completely defeated. Then we come to the car chase. Now listen, you can say I failed the challenge here, okay? I know there's that one soy boy in the audience with his glasses and his little sippy cup sitting there like, oh, you took damage, Dante, worst YouTuber ever, dislike, unsub. But listen, I didn't take actual health damage here, okay? I didn't have to use any herbs after the fact, and even so, they make this part completely impossible to avoid damage on, on single player at least. I have a theory that it is possible to avoid damage using two players, but I really didn't feel like testing that. Either way, I don't count this, but if you do, feel free to earn this gold star. Good job. Okay, so Elphic Boy is down, and here we are still chasing the Underminer. The jungle people weren't any harder than the Africans. Just a little elbow grease, some hard work and determination, and we were slowly getting through the trials. That's when we made it to Chicken Island, and imagine my surprise when a random chicken smashed into my balls at the speed of light, losing me a good 5% of my health. Are you kidding me? Did I just get beat by a chicken? A chicken just sent the most powerful man in the BSAA to bed without supper. We finally got all pieces to the puzzle door. I used the rocket launcher I found on the boat on some shirtless men, and Sheva surprisingly didn't get destroyed by the floor spike trap. Impressive. You know what? Take a second here and just appreciate that I've gotten halfway through a challenge without failing it. Just let that sink in. Is this actually going to be possible? Let's find out. After a bit more jungle adventuring, my partner and I came across my worst nightmare. Not one, but two chainsaw guys. Golly. And not only that, but they loved to stick around Sheva and ruin all of my progress. I swear, this part of the game was giving me the biggest brain aneurysm of my life. I could dodge these guys easy. As always, it was my little sidekick that got in the way and ruined everything for me. Luckily, after about half an hour, I was finally able to figure out a solution to our little problem, and we were on our way to meet Josh. He informed us that he was an epic gamer and that he could decode the elevator as long as we protected him. Alright, seemed fair I guess. This part wasn't overly bad, I mean Josh died at one point and it looked kinda of funny, but other than that this part was a walk in the park. That's when we came across Irving again, and this time, he was going down. You know what I like about Sheva? The fact that she'll selflessly sacrifice her life just to grab an herb. I mean, a Gatling gun may be mowing down anything in sight, and some would say it would be a stupid idea to grab an herb at such an inappropriate time. But not Sheva, no. She's special that way. She's the bravest of us all. Also, I gave this guy a knuckle sandwich and I'm so confused on what happened.
Shortly after this, we finally caught up to Irving. Irving decided he'd be happier living as an octopus, and so he simply became an octopus. I think we all have something to learn here. Can I say something controversial here? Sheva was actually more useful here than me. I mean, in my defense, she's only useful with infinite weapons, but still, she made me proud, and I was happy to call her my partner. Ugh! You know, this kind of reminds me of when I was born. Yeah, there's me, that's my doctor, and that's my mom. Josh dropped us off at the caves, and oh boy, this part of the adventure was a lot of fun. Yeah, the whole temple area is pretty self-explanatory. It's just the same trash over and over again. Shoot spider, shoot enemy with rifle, heal dumb Sheva, you get the point. I wish I could have gone through this challenge without Sheva taking damage as well, but trust me, no man should ever have to go through that. And here we are. The part I never wanted to tackle. Why? Because this part forces you to run away like a complete pansy. So today, I said no. No more running. Wait, that was it? Okay. I didn't know you could move so fast. Come on! Okay. Shavini and I found ourselves in an even darker, spookier cave with nowhere left to go. Luckily, this cave had two extremely easy to find pole chains on either sides of the wall. Wow. Resident Evil 5 truly is a game remembered for its puzzles. I can feel my IQ increasing already. So here we get our first peek of Wesker, and he's looking as chipper as ever. My man's standing here like he's ready to go to the middle school dance. I'm skipping the rest of the temple section because it's pretty boring. Okay, so here's my point of view, right? Shavini and I are in the deep, dark caves when we come across a lab. Woohoo, right? Civilization. Oh, that's what I thought until I opened the door to see this. Go! Roger! Go! Roger! Go! Okay! Go! Roger! Apparently, she was as scared as I was. So we continued through the abandoned lab. I executed some poor lab rats, shot some goats in the butt, and here we came across the rare naked mole rat. Only a few of them were left in existence. This part wasn't too bad. We just lured them away and then ran for our damn lives. We thought we had made it home free, but imagine my surprise when I found out that we had just gotten ourselves into more danger. I don't think they'll notice us. Oh really, Einstein, you think? I only shattered every goddamn window in a 50 mile radius. Pause. So let me explain my plan here. Now, I thought I was smart here. Kill them all before they even know you're there, was my brilliant idea. But guess what? These filthy naked mole rats are infinite. So no matter how many boulders I've punched in the past or how many dance recitals I've gone through in my life, I just wasn't prepared for this. We ran. I still had to use some grenades to fend them off while we waited for the elevator, but that was about it. The U8 was really easy. Some shots to the elbow, uh, the kneecap, the uh, mebo cap, and three grenades down the throat was enough to take him down. And don't get me wrong, boys, anytime the enemies were shooting at me, it was a tough time. But unlike Resident Evil 4, in this game we can take cover. And yes, I know we can take cover here, uh, shut up! So it was simply a matter of knocking these boys out one at a time until there was no one left. Also, flash grenades do a teeny tiny bit of damage. Did you know that? Because I didn't. It's actually possible to die from just flash grenades. So yeah, imagine the fun I had trying to dodge bullets and flash grenades. I see why Wesker wears sunglasses now, he's a smart lad. Oh, hell no. Fighting the Ouroboros? I was at a loss. This man was insane. Anytime I'd get close to him, he'd slap me around like I was nothing. Attempt after attempt after attempt, and I was getting nowhere. And stupid Sheva was just standing there, with her cute little stun rod, mocking me. Really though, I couldn't seem to get close enough to the guy with the flamethrower without him smacking me. So that's when the idea came to me. Why use someone important, when you can use someone expendable? Oh my god! Sheva, you, you did it! You've proven your worth. I'm sorry I ever said anything mean to you. Partners, 
Side note, the big black machine gun guys were pretty easy to handle. With my fully upgraded bolt action rifle, I'd just spam shooting them in the face until they were dead. It was the equivalent of throwing dirt in someone's eyes to win a battle, but I'm alive and he's not so in the end, who cares? Well friends, it's been a long journey and we've gotten this far without taking damage, but it's not over quite yet. Introducing the Dream Team. I was faced with my worst nightmare, fighting Jill Valentine. Someone help! Please guys, you still have plenty of time to let me in! It's too late. Poor Chris. I'll never forget you, buddy. Sure, she locked me out of the mansion all those years ago and I was forced to crawl my way back to civilization after tearing those dogs apart. But she was still family. I don't want to hurt you! I don't want to hurt you! Now! Hold it down! We have to get that device off I don't want to hurt you! Seven minutes later, it was up to us to fight Jill alone. So I got her alone in an alley, snuck up behind her, and gave her a little taste of my sneak attack. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, God, Chris, what are you doing? Oh, you pervert. Good for you, Jill. I see you've been taking your woman self defense classes. So we saved Jill, defeated the ship. Defeated Excella, and here we were at the final fight with Wesker. Okay, I know I speed around the last section of the game, but this video is getting way too long. And funnily enough, this is where I'd like to end the challenge, on literally the last fight of the game. Yes, really. This challenge isn't possible to do without taking damage. We've made it this far just to fail. Why? One simple reason. When defeating Wesker, you have to jump onto his back so that Sheva can knife him to submission. And during this time, you take damage. I made it this far, got through 20 hours of grueling gameplay for this. Or so I thought. I didn't know this, but you can actually defeat Wesker normally here, hands-free. Am I the only one who didn't know this? Because I feel dumb. So yes, we defeated Wesker hands-free, blew him up in the volcano, and flew off into the sunset. So can you beat Resident Evil 5 without taking damage? Surprisingly, yes. If you don't count the car chase at least. So uh, cool, I, I didn't expect that. Challenge completed! If you enjoy watching gaming challenges, subscribe to me because I make new gaming videos every single week. Bruh. And make sure to click that bell. If you don't click that bell, you pretty well aren't subscribed to me, so make sure you click that bell. Thanks for watching. Check out my many other Resident Evil gaming challenges, and I'll see you. Thick boys! In my next video.